Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. I apologize for my appearance today. I normally get my hair cut before now. I've kind of gone back to pandemic hair. And the reason is I've got COVID. I managed to go through that whole pandemic and never got COVID. My wife had it. The kids tested positive for it. I was exposed to it multiple times. Never got it. Thought I was special. Thought I had some kind of miracle genes that was not susceptible to COVID. Well, turns out I'm normal. I've got it. And I've had it pretty good the last few days. So today, what better project to do when your energy level is low and you're kind of miserable and you don't want to do a lot of physical work, but to do a service on your tractor. And my tractor is due for a service, so we're going to go through a basic service today. And if you haven't been around tractors much, I'll give you some ideas here to help you get comfortable with servicing your, your tractor. And I'll show you some products that will make that job a lot easier. And if you're a pro and you've done it all your life, you're going to see a couple of products in this video that uh, help you get the job done uh, easier, cleaner, and quicker. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do today is run the tractor around a little bit, get the oil warmed up so all the oil drains out. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to take the front end loader bucket off. One thing I like to do is to put a piece of clean cardboard underneath the tractor and that keeps the oil and fuel off my driveway and also gives me a clean place to lay when I'm taking the drain plugs out underneath and if you park your tractor on top of the pretty decent sized piece of cardboard so it doesn't blow around uh, you'll be a lot cleaner during this whole process and I'm gonna lift the loader up in the air and put these cylinder safety stops in. If you can get the loader up out of the way, it makes servicing the tractor a lot easier. So we're going to put these stops in. Anytime you're working on the top end of the tractor, uh, put these stops in and get that loader out of the way. It just makes the job a lot easier. And I sell these on my website. They come in 15, 17, and 20 inch lengths. And I never know which one you need I don't have a chart that shows the cylinders of every different loader. So the best thing to do is go lift your loader up in the air and measure and see how long you need. The longer you get, the more up, up and out of the way it'll be. But I've got 20 inch stops for my tractor. Uh, I was uh, talking to a guy the other day, had a Massey about the same size and he needed 15 inch stops. So you never know what size you're going to need until you measure the cylinders. So once the stops are in, that, that loader will stay up in the air and you can work underneath it without uh, being afraid. I've got a mechanism on my joystick that you can turn that keeps it from moving, but I don't trust that. I, I want a, a mechanical safety device in there that, that keeps me safe. Now that my oil's warmed up, I can take the drain plugs out. And Here's a little tip if you're a novice tractor owner. A lot of tractors have a drain plug on both sides of the oil pan and the reason that is is the front wheel assist uh, drive shaft runs right through the oil pan and so and and the oil pan extends below the shaft and so you've got oil on both sides so you want to take both of them out and uh, make sure that the gasket goes back with them when you put them back on but I'm gonna take these plugs out drain the oil out of my tractor engine Next thing I'm going to do, and this is before I do anything, is I'm going to write with a paint pencil on the side of my oil filter the date that I changed it and how many hours were on the tractor at that time. Then I'm going to take the old oil filter off and I like to drain all the oil out of the old filter and then recycle the canister because it's metal. And at this time, if you can, I like to put as much oil as I can in that new filter and then screw it back on so it's already got new oil in it. Uh, makes the uh, lubrication of the engine after startup uh, a lot better. And then we'll put the plugs back in and then fill it back up with oil. Be really slow when you're dumping oil into your engine. It, 
tends to with a normal funnel bubble over. Uh, if you can find a speedy flow funnel, those things are great. Uh, they, they'll prevent that. I used to sell those and or my supplier sold out, so I'm not sure where you get them now, but uh, be real careful, dump the oil in really slow, because if you dump it in fast, it'll bubble over and you'll have oil everywhere. And the next thing I'm gonna do is change my hydraulic filter. I had a failure on my tractor not long ago where I had to change most of the hydraulic oil, and so the oil is pretty fresh, but I didn't change the filter at that time, so I'm gonna change the filter now. Uh, and I'm not going to show it because it's hard to hold a camera and film. You know what changing a filter looks like. But here's, here's a hydraulic filter. Now on some tractors, and mine's one of them, you'll have both a hydraulic filter and a hydrostat filter. And mine is buried. Here's where it's at. I'm not going to show me changing it. I can barely get a wrench up in there. But I'm going to change that filter. And then I'll check my oil levels when I'm done, make sure I've still got enough oil and probably add some. Now, after I'm done, it's time to work on the fuel. And I like to put my waste oil container under the fuel filter, so any fuel that comes out is going to go into the waste oil. Uh, the waste oil that I drain out, I take to my local dealership, and they use it to heat their shop in the winter. They've got a waste oil burner. And they don't care if it's got a little diesel in it or oil or whatever it is. They, they, those, those waste oil burners get nasty. They, they'll burn about anything, but boy, they do get nasty. Something to really be careful about. Some of the fuel filters have a spring in the bottom of them, and you can lose that spring, and then you're in trouble. But the bigger problem, and this happens a lot, is a lot of times you'll take the old fuel filter out, and the gasket will stay in the in the receptacle and if you get a new gasket you may put that on screw it back in and you've got two gaskets and that can cause the tractor not to run it can cause the fuel to leak it can cause a lot of bad things if you've done a service and your tractor's not running right make sure you only put one gasket back in there next thing I'm going to do and it's September when I record this winter's a ways away but I'm going to check my radiator fluid and I'm gonna check, see how protected I am in the winter. And you use one of these devices that you get fluid out of the radiator and however many balls it floats will tell you how protected you are. And it's early to do that, but I'd rather do it now when the weather's nice outside than uh, when it's blowing snow and about to get really cold. Looks like I'm good on being protected. Next thing I'm gonna do is change my air filter. If it's not too bad, I'll tap it on the pavement and get all the dust off of it and put it back in. But it's been a while since I've changed mine. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Next thing I'm going to do is clean the radiator out good. And then I use another product that's available on my website called uh, Radiator Genie. It's a wand, actually two wands, that are specifically designed to clean out a tractor radiator. It's kind of hard to get into the fins there. And with Radiator Genie, you can either use compressed air or water and blast those fins out. And clogged radiators is a big problem with tractors. You know, we're, we're having to create air movement. We're not driving down the road at 70 miles an hour. We're having to use a big fan to suck air in. And as we're sucking air in, we're in an environment, a lot of times when we're brush hogging, where there's weed seeds and debris and dust and dirt, and that all goes right into the radiator. So keeping the radiator clean will extend the life of your tractor. So clean that thing out good with a radiator genie. It's available on my website. It's one of the best tools you can buy to make this job a lot easier. And finally, the last thing I'm going to do today is grease everything. And I like to get my owner's manual that tells me where all the grease zerks are on the tractor and follow it closely. Because if you're new to tractors, there may be some grease zerks that are hidden that you don't know about, that you never find. And uh, you want to grease all of them. The more you grease the tractor, the longer it'll last. And grease is the lifeblood of a tractor. And my favorite greasing system is Lube Shuttle. I endorse it. I sell it. I wouldn't be without it. Lube Shuttle is a German-built grease gun, very, very deluxe. 
It's got a screw-in grease canister. When you run out of grease, you unscrew the old canister, take the new canister, push a bunch of grease up above the top, screw it back in, and you're good to go again. It takes all the mess out of greasing, and it's a wonderful product. I find myself greasing more since I don't have to deal with that stupid plunger and having to take that tube out of the old type grease gun. It was just a mess and you get grease all over you. You don't do that with Lube Shuttle. It's one of my absolute favorite products. It's available on my website. Now there is a grease arc, the one everybody kind of forgets about it. And I'll post a video here at the end that goes into depth on it is the one on the front axle. If you'll put your bucket back on your tractor and lift the front end off the ground just a fraction so there's no weight on it you can get that one greased and get grease all around that area there and that'll make your front axle uh, pivot and last a lot longer well there you go i got this took a this took a long time to get this tractor serviced because i would do a little project go in and take a three hour nap and then come back and do it again this covid's nasty but i finally got her done and now i'm ready to go back to work when i feel like it I'll tell you about a couple other videos you might want to watch if you're doing this project here's one on selecting the right grease uh, it's done by the guy that brought lube shuttle to north america and he's an expert on grease and uh, he does a real good job of covering it and here's one that goes into detail about greasing that front axle pivot zerk and and shows me doing it thanks for watching